What's up guys, how's it going? I'm here with Clement and we're going to be doing a software engineering trivia test. This was made by our AI overlords, ChatGPT, and we're going to be seeing how, how washed up we really are as software engineers. I feel very washed up. I really don't know how, <laughs> how we're gonna do on this. It's we have how many wrong. questions? 15. 15. This could be wrong. And because we're so excited to see how washed up we really are as software engineers, we're going to film two of these. So it's going to be this video you're watching right now. And then after this video, go watch the second test that we're going to be doing over on Clement's channel. Okay, so question one. What is the time complexity of binary search on a sorted array? Okay, so- Does it make a difference if it's sorted? I, that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yes, because binary search, it needs to be sorted. Otherwise you can't do binary search. Okay. Binary search is like an algorithm. I'm not that washed up where you, if <laughs> it's sorted right like you have a you have a, a dictionary of words you go to the middle you go to either the left or the right then you cut in half you like you're eliminating half the the elements in the array and you keep doing that so it would be log of them right so because you eliminate half every time log them yeah. log of them we're both in agreement yep, okay lock it in <laughs> let's see if we got this answer correct don't show the rest it is oh, oh log log in. okay okay awesome all right okay number two who created the c programming language I have no idea. You have no idea? Okay, so I unfortunately, like if this were a game show, I would get it wrong because I don't know it exactly. But I think it's a guy named, it's a Norwegian or Swedish guy and it's like Bjorn, B-J-O-R-N. Isn't that the guy who wrote the, doesn't he have like a textbook or something? Maybe. I think he has like idea. a famous textbook. But like a Bjorn, right. Bjorn Scroop? Or Struzel, or <laughs> no, isn't Struzel like <laughs> a Danish? Yes. Uh, Bjorn, Bjorn S. Something is okay. my guess. That's better than my guess. Let's see. Dennis <laughs> Ritchie. <laughs> Wait, then who am I? I heard that name before. Am I thinking of C sharp? I don't know. I think that's the guy who wrote the like famous book on C. Maybe. Or maybe C plus plus or something. Dang. <laughs> I, I felt pretty good about that one. <laughs> and get what command is used to combine changes from one branch into another? Merge. Get right? merge. Yeah. Is the command to merge? It is. Wait. Right? Get. Yeah, get, get merge. Get merge. Does it want the whole command? Like, do we need the name? Of, it's like get merge and then no, the I other don't. branch name or something? Yeah, but I don't think that matters. But yeah, because otherwise like get commit, get stash. No, yeah, get merge. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also uh, get like, there's like rebase and stuff like that, but that's oh, not like, Oh, it could be rebase. But rebase is just like moving, rebase, it's moving you're, you're it. Under um, the stack, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think right. it's get merged. Yeah, get merged. Okay, okay, get merged. Okay, what does the acronym SOLID stand for in object-oriented programming or design? Design. Oh, I remember this from college. Like, I don't remember the answer, <laughs> but I remember being taught this. It has to do with like the, like the principles of object-oriented programming, but I don't remember what any of this stands for. Do you have any guess? I think like Sorry. maybe maybe O is object. I mean. <laughs> and D that, is design. <laughs> I that is know. a guess, yeah. I feel like I knew this at some point in time, but yeah, I don't know. Single responsibility, open, closed, list, list stuff. stuff. So I don't even know what that is. Substitution, interface, segregation, dependency, inversion. Okay, I had no idea. Yeah, that. You, I could never have gotten And honestly, that. if you ever get asked that in some sort of interview like that, I don't think that's a good question. <laughs> no. I don't, I'm biased, but. All right, what is the main difference between a process and a thread? I was afraid that this was gonna be a trivia because like this is like a classic CS 101 like question. Yeah. So a process is essentially something that contains threads. So you can have multiple threads in a process. So a process would be used for something at the uh, operating system level for if you're running some application. So for example, you might have a process for like VS code or something like that. And it might use multiple processes. Some do like some browsers use multiple processes for different tabs or different domains or something like that. But a process is a larger thing and a thread operates inside of a process and there can be multiple threads operating concurrently. So when we talk about like multi-threading, it's concurrency of multiple threads within a process and those threads share a memory space. So if one thread crashes, all the threads crash versus if a process fails, the other apps on your computer aren't going to fail because they're separate. I definitely was going to say the exact same thing. Exact same thing. <laughs> the only reason I have that like thought out of an answer is because I had to answer this in a YouTube video like a month ago. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Right. Uh, a process is an independent execution unit with its own memory space. A thread is a lightweight process that shares memory with other threads in the same process. I don't like the wording of a lightweight process. It's like using the term to define the term, but okay. Which 
HTTP method is considered idempotent and is typically used to update resources. Idempotent means it's the same every time. Yeah, it's like you if you made the request twice, you would always get would, the same state. Yeah, like yeah, if you do like an update in a database, update doesn't uh, you can do it two or three times because you're just updating to the same thing versus like an add, you can't do multiple times because you'd end up with multiple updates. Right. So HTTP method, so I guess it would be something that's like updating, right? It's like like patch or is update a method? <laughs> well, it's funny. I was going to say the fact that it says and used to update resources it gives it away to me. Like it's, yeah, it's an, whatever the update method is for HTTP. Yeah. But otherwise I, I, was, I would have been a bit like unsure, but yeah, it, it's got to be the update I, method. I think there's both update and patch, isn't there? But I don't know. I don't actually but isn't there know. one that's like not used or something? There's, I think there's a few that don't get used very much. I don't really remember what the yeah. HTTP Should methods are. Should we go with are. update? I don't think it's called update, but let's go or edit or something. Let's go with update. Okay. Uh, that sounds vaguely familiar. I, I feel like also, couldn't any method be used for something that is ad impotent? I don't know how I feel about this question. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Just because we got it wrong. We got it wrong. <laughs> All right, what is the default port for HTTPS? 443? I think 80 is HTTP and 443 is HTTPS. I plead the fifth. <laughs> I, I'm going with 443. Okay. Ooh, got that one right. Okay. okay. What design pattern provides a simplified interface to a complex subsystem? I feel like this is not a CS question. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I thought about is like, I never learned design patterns really. Like I don't yeah, remember, I don't remember being taught them in school very much. And I don't remember ever discussing them in like work meetings. Like, I don't remember anyone ever being like, oh, we need to use the whatever design pattern. Like it's just like not a discussion I remember having with many of them, but okay. Design pattern provides a simplified interface to a complex subsystem. Yeah. For me, this is the kind of question where I really don't know. I would have to skip. Like, I, I don't even know what to guess. Yeah. This. Like I feel like if this was multiple choice, maybe I might yeah. to, like pick out which one is it's talking about, but I, yeah, I don't know what it's really getting at with this question. Let's see. Sod. For sod. I would not no, have known I, that. I, I don't think I knew that was a design pattern. What is the main goal of the cap theorem in distributed systems? I definitely have a video on systems expert. By the way, if you're preparing for systems design interviews or algorithm interviews, check out algo expert or systems expert. But I have a video on the cap theorem. Do you remember the video you made? That is like, I filmed that video a ago. long time ago. <laughs> so the cap theorem is something that like you can't have three certain things in a database concurrently. Like it's kind of like like speed, price, and accuracy pick two type of yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. but in, in databases. That sounds in, familiar. I feel like I watched this video on systems right? at some point. But what is it? First of all, what does it stand for? But for databases, it might be something about like, yeah, it's like, um, can you have- Like consistency. Consistency, like strong consistency. <laughs> this seems good. <laughs> what is, what would A stand? I don't know if the, I don't know if the three letters stand for the three three things, accessibility. Okay, this, you see, you, you gotta brush up on your like systems design stuff if you're getting interviewed. I don't remember. I don't remember, but it, I know for sure it's the three, yeah. it's the trilemma, the big trilemma of yeah. like software. I think engineering. you're right about that. Okay, let's see. It describes trade-offs between consistency, availability, availability and partition tolerance. Okay, so okay. We, we had, no, you said accessibility. We had one of the three. And we had the concept of yeah. I, if I had, I, how did I not know availability? Yeah, but yeah, okay. that makes sense. Okay, which SQL or SQL command is used to remove only the data from a table but keep its structure? So this question, I think I will defer to Connor. What? <laughs> So if you want to remove everything, it's drop table. If you want to remove only the data, like is there a command to remove all of the data other than just like delete star from table or something? Is delete the key, the keyword well, maybe, for deleting de something? Yeah, maybe delete. Delete star. Or del or something. Yeah, I, I would say like delete star from table or something, but I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's what they're going for, but let's see. Yeah, it's like, I wonder if there's a command like drop because drop is just like delete the table. Like maybe there's a, I don't know, let's go. That, this I wouldn't have known. Yeah, no, that I would be asking ChatGPT if I needed to do that. <laughs> what does the this keyboard refer to in JavaScript when used inside a regular function, not an arrow function in the global scope? So this is definitely like your ballpark with front expert, but yeah, the, the this keyword is like, it's like the, the, when you're referring to the state. Yeah. So <laughs> it's like terrible explanation. <laughs> it is super confusing. Like this can mean so many different things in different contexts. And I think it also matters for this question if we are in strict mode or not. I could be wrong about that, but I think it- But I feel like that, that's not Yeah, but I think what they're here. getting at is it would be the caller. 
right? So it's going to generally end up being like the window if you're at the global, I guess it says it's global, right? So yeah, I think it's going to be on the front end of the window or like Node.js would be whatever the like global object is called. I feel so washed up right now because like I'm vaguely familiar with the, this keyword, but I feel like I'm incapable of explaining it properly. I have not thought about this since we made front expert. That's I am not confident in my answer, but <laughs> I, I feel like if you're inside of a regular function in the global scope, yeah, if you're, if you're not inside of, if you're inside of like a class or an object, it's different. But if you're in just a function in the global scope, I think it's just going to be the global object, which in the browsers is the window. Okay, let's try it. All right, the global object. Okay, window and browsers. Okay. <laughs> you can still buy front end God, expert. <laughs> We're not that washed up. He's still a front end expert. <laughs> what programming paradigm emphasizes functions and immutable data? I mean, emphasizes functions. That's functional, functional progr programming. Yeah, functional programming, right? But immutable data, is that that's also functional programming? Yeah, I think that's generally a principle of functional programming is to yeah. not mutate data. Like it's a big, th it's in like JavaScript, for instance, when you write like functional JavaScript, you it's want like it to be you use, yeah. yeah, you use like the map function and things like that to create new arrays instead of yeah. mutating. So I guess it's. And like in React, you create like the state, you always copy the entire state object. Yeah. I remember, I remember. Yeah. Yep. So uh, yeah, I think it's functional, functional programming. programming. Yep. Functional okay. programming. Okay. What tool is commonly used to containerize applications? for deployment. Docker. <laughs> That's an easy one. Containers. Yep. Even though like, don't ask me yeah. what a container is, but. <laughs> yeah, definitely Docker on that one. Okay. Don't ask me what a container is. Exactly. <laughs> but I know Docker with the, wh with the whale logo. I think maybe the most difficult thing I remember doing in college was having to figure out how to use Docker. It was yeah. such a pain. In big O notation, which of the following is faster, O of n log n or O of n squared? Okay, there, I don't think either of us is that washed up. It's obviously O of n squared. Okay. <laughs> no, it's uh, O of n log n. Yep, don't even need to check that Don't one. even need to check that one. <laughs> All right, what is the purpose of a unit test? That feels kind of broad, but. Very broad, yeah. I wouldn't say if there's like a singular answer. The main answer is the the purpose of unit test is to annoy software engineers. Exactly. And then th the second answer would be, it's to test your code, but it's specifically like a small unit of code, like one function, you are testing that that function always returns a certain output or, you know, returns like an output given certain inputs. Like you're not testing a whole suite of functionality. Yep. Let's see what ChatGPT says. To test individual components or functions of code to ensure they work as expected in isolation. Yep. Okay. So now let's tally up how many we got. It's probably going to be on the screen already, but for us, so we got one, two, three, three we got that wrong. Four, four, five, five six, six, seven, eight, eight nine. nine. Nine out of 15. Nine out of 15. I might be a little bit washed up. <laughs> That's decent, you know? <laughs> Is like, that passing? He's like, it, he's like kind of an F out of a hundred, but because an F is like a 60 or something, right? So we failed. Good. <laughs> but like, perfect. But like, it doesn't look that bad. There were hard questions. <laughs> All right, if you did like this and you want to see us do another one of these quizzes, we're about to film a second software engineering quiz over on Clement's channel. Maybe we can do a little bit better. So go check out that video as well.